All right, this is going to be an awesome video. I have an Acer Helios 300 Predator, and I'm going to put uh, Cryonaut Thermal Grizzly Pace on it instead of Liquid Metal to see if there's any difference between the two and what the performance is like. I'm also going to add a 500 gigabyte SSD H60 Evo, and why not? I'm going to replace the thermal pads because I'm in there. So it just makes sense. So what I have right here is a refurbished model from Newegg. It was $750, and I recommended this to a teacher friend whose son is going to college to be a mechanical engineer, and he needs to do CAD drawings uh, on this computer. So I always recommend a high-end GPU uh, if you're doing CAD with a high-frequency CPU. So for $750, this is an amazing deal, um, and I can't wait to upgrade it and give it to the teacher so they can give it to their son for Christmas. So what I'm going to do is what I did in the last video, I'm going to show you how to take it all apart um, and then I'm also going to show you how to apply uh, cryonaut paste to the GPU and CPU and then I'm also going to show you how to put it all back together. Alright, before I take it apart I want to do some benchmarks on this computer and see what the thermals are like. I'm running CPU-Z and I'm doing a CPU stress test and I actually fast forwarded this video so if you see it going quicker that's just so this video isn't incredibly long. You can see that the CPU is getting really hot. It's reaching 91, 93 degrees Celsius. The fans are going to go to full bore 5800 RPMs and you can actually just listen to the fans in the background while I'm recording. Um, and it gets quite loud so this definitely indicates that the thermal compound inside this laptop is not performing well and that it should be reapplied with a better performing uh, thermal compound so that this computer can operate at a cooler temperature and actually have better performance so that being said I have my baseline I see my numbers I see a lot of fluctuation up there in the power delivery so we're thermal throttling so I'm going to show you now how to take it apart and apply thermal grizzly cryo knot uh, compound to the laptop. Alright, the screws on the back are just normal Phillips head screws, so you're just going to take your time and remove all of them. They're all the same size, so you don't really have to worry about mixing them up. Just take your time and work around the laptop and ensure you removed all of the screws. Now, I do take out the uh, hard drive tray just as a precaution. You know, I don't think you really need to do this, um, so if you want to not waste time, you don't have to do that. Now, I learned a lot of lessons from the previous video. If you just take your edge and pry tool and work on the side and front first and you get to separate the back plate, it's really easy doing it this way. Um, and you can easily remove the back plate relatively quickly. Please don't forget to remove the battery cable. That is very important. Do that first before you do anything. All right, after you remove the uh, battery cable, you can go ahead and remove the screws that hold in the heat sink uh, for the GPU and CPU. What you're going to want to do is remove the four fan screws you see I'm removing right now and put them into their own pile since they are different from the other screws. And then what you want to do is go ahead and remove the GPU screws and then the CPU screws. Now I recommend putting them in their own piles just to separate them. But after taking it apart now for multiple times, I realize these screws seem to be all the same. But it's always a good precaution to separate them just in case there's a difference in them. Um, so go ahead and just be patient, work around uh, the plate and get all the screws out and then you'll be able to remove the heat sink assembly. Now when you remove the heat sink assembly, please remember to pull from the top left and gently flip it over onto its other side. Now you can see I kind of mess up by trying to pull from the top, don't do that. Go to the top left corner pull up and then immediately flip it over so you don't remove any of the cables and detach them. Now you can start working on the inside. Something I noticed on the laptop was the paste was very patchy and dry. It didn't look like it was making really good contact and it was lightly applied. Normally with these manufactured laptops you see they put a ton of paste on it and it's everywhere but in this case it's not. It's very lightly put on there. So what I'm going to do is take 91% isopropyl alcohol and let's remove this uh, terrible paste from this laptop. So I actually ran out of q-tips so I'm using a microfiber cloth. Um, I think that's fine. I'm just going to go ahead and be patient and work around uh, both the GPU and CPU die and then the uh, copper heat sinking. Make sure they're really clean. You want to make sure there's no oils on them and you want to make sure that there's no uh, old thermal paste on it. So you're just going to be patient and work around the laptop. Alright, my next step is to change out the thermal pads with Arctic thermal pads and I'm already in the laptop so why not. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove all of the thermal pads you see that I'm pointing at 
and replace them with a higher grade thermal pad. All right, a little trick is to use an X-Acto knife and then just take out the thermal pads one at a time and just kind of cut out the outline of it on your thermal sheet and just be patient. This is a real tedious process, um, but just take your time and you can easily replace the thermal pads. Make sure that you don't leave the plastic on the thermal pad, so be patient and double check it and watch out for any plastic pieces falling inside the laptop too. Um, that can happen, you know, especially when you're rushing or you're not paying attention to what's happening uh, while you're doing this. So just be careful, take your time, and replace the thermal pads. It's a tedious process. All right, at this time I'm going to add Thermal Grizzly Crown Knot paste to the GPU on the left and the CPU on the right. Now, when you add this paste, it's non-conductive, so you don't have to worry about it shorting out if it touches any components. It's not like liquid metal. Now, I'm a firm believer of doing the X pattern and putting a significant amount of paste onto the GPU and the CPU because there's no problem with putting a little more than normal paste on it. Uh, you want to make sure that the die is covered completely so that there is a better transfer of heat between it and the copper plate on the heatsink. Now, there's a lot of videos out there that do research on this, and all the videos that I found, there's no problem with going a little bit more than normal, uh, but there is a problem with going too little. So I just want to ensure that there are no problems with the GPU and CPU transferring heat to the heatsink. Now, you want to go ahead and make sure there's no oil on your uh, chipset. I noticed there was some oil on the die, so I'm taking isopropyl alcohol and I'm just scrubbing it and cleaning it um, and making sure that it's good to go. So the X pattern is easy. You really can't go wrong with it. Just be patient. You can um, ensure that the die is completely covered and that you won't have any problems. So you can see right here, I'm just going to take the plunger here and make sure that I have good coverage on the die and make an X pattern with it. Now I'm actually running out of paste at this moment, so I'm having to squeeze really hard. Um, I thought I had more left in it, um, but that's all right. So I'm just gonna make sure I get all that excess um, stuff out of it at this time, since it's pretty much all gone. So I'm just putting a little more on the GPU. Remember the GPU needs a little bit more paste than your CPU die does. All right, now what I'm gonna do is take the heat sink assembly and carefully rotate it back over onto the right side and then make sure the screw holes are aligned perfectly before I press down. So once I align them the way I think they need to be, I'm gonna push down firmly and then I'm gonna put all the screws back into place. All right, I'm gonna put the GPU and CPU uh, screws in first just to ensure there's enough tension onto both dies. Um, and then I'm going to put the screws into the fan assembly on the left last. Now I did notice there was some grease on the heat sink. So I did see that earlier when I took it apart. But I want to go ahead and ensure everything's clean. So after I put the battery back in and the cable back in, I'm going to clean it with some isopropyl alcohol just to ensure everything's clean. All right, your last step is to put the back plate on and you want to go ahead and push on all the edges so that everything snaps together firmly. Um, you want to go ahead and really ensure that everything clicks. Um, then you're going to want to put in your RAM um, tray in so that it's sealed. Um, it's a little tedious at first, but you can get it in. And then what I'm going to do is install a 860 EVO 500 gig SSD. This will give the laptop a lot more storage. And I do like that this has an expandable storage bay that's easy to access. So I'm going to go ahead and put the drive in the computer at this time. And then I'm going to test the thermals and see how well everything works. All right, the laptop's put back together. I have CPU-Z running, and I'm going to pull up the Predator Sense monitor just to look at the temps. Everything seems to be running fine. And then what I'm going to do now is run a stress test and just kind of look at the fan speeds and look at the temp. What's really cool to see is that I stay in the 60 degrees Celsius range. Um, and I'm going to put a timer to the right just so you can get a sense of uh, the timeline in the video since it is being fast forward a little bit for the sake of time. You can see that the fans don't even hit um, 5,000 RPM. So they're sitting right at 32, 3,300 RPM speed. So the fans are running at 50% the speeds prior to the thermal paste upgrade. And then the CPU sits in the 60 degrees Celsius range the entire time for three minutes straight. I was in the high 90s um, with the fans at full speed at 5,800 RPM. So Definitely um, applying the thermal paste uh, cryonaut is a great idea. It'll 
make your fans run lower and it'll improve the performance and keep your temps a lot lower. All right, the last benchmark test I want to run is Heaven Benchmark. And what I'm going to do is look at how well the GPU and CPU manage the thermal temps in the laptop. And then also I want to look at the fan speeds. So with Heaven running right now, um, you're going to watch the fan speeds and you're going to see the uh, CPU temp at the top and the GPU temp at the bottom. Now, what I noticed is the CPU temp uh, went up to about the high 70s and the GPU temp went up to about the high 60s. So overall, this is great. Uh, your fan speeds never really hit 5,000 plus RPM, so it's noticeable. Uh, you can hear the fans, but it's not like a leaf blower in a room. Uh, you do also notice that the temps are very manageable. There's no thermal throttling occurring. Um, and the laptop's performing well. So this kind of shows how well the Cryonaut paste is now performing compared to the old thermal paste that was on the laptop when it was shipped uh, to me. Now, something I did test at the end of this uh, video you can see here is I actually stop uh, Heaven Benchmark and I want to see how fast it cools off. What I noticed is it took a while. So I think maybe the difference between liquid metal and Cryonaut um, paste might be the actual speed at which the laptop cools off and dissipates the thermal heat inside the laptop. Um, but what I'm going to do now is compare some numbers between liquid metal and the cryonaut paste and see what the real difference is on performance. What are the results? So comparing cryonaut to liquid metal, I found that liquid metal performed about 10 degrees Celsius better than cryonaut. Now keep in mind, I am using two totally different Acer Helios Predator 300 laptops. So the one I applied to my son's laptop, you know, maybe if I apply Cryonaut to it, maybe it will be a closer um, difference between the two. But um, testing them, these are my results between the two different uh, laptops. The liquid metal had a 10 degree lower Celsius uh, performance on the CPU stress test, and the GPU was very close. In fact, the fan speeds were almost identical, um, and the liquid metal got to about 72 degrees Celsius in the Heaven benchmark test, and the Cryonaut got up to about 68, 69 degrees Celsius. So they're really close to each other. So there wasn't a real big difference between the liquid metal um, and the Cryonaut when it came to the GPU stress test. So what this tells you is, you're probably going to get a lot better uh, heat performance when you use liquid metal, uh, but there are the cons to liquid metal where you have to go the extra mile to ensure your components don't short out because it is conductive. And again, it does cause um, a reaction to occur with the copper plating. Um, you know, I haven't seen any issues with my MacBook yet, nor have I seen any issues with the Acer Helios 300 that I gave to my son. Um, and I'll check them in a year. And if the fan speeds get crazy or the temps start to get really hot on the laptops, then I'll go in there and check them out and see if I have to do anything to them. So it's up to you. Uh, disclaimer, if you use liquid metal, it is dangerous and it can ruin your laptop permanently. Um, and if you are someone who's nervous, a Cryonaut is probably a great option for 99% of everyone. But for the enthusiasts out there who want to go to the extreme edge, um, liquid metal is great. So you can see the results here in the chart. Thank you so much for watching this. I'm sorry this video took a long time uh, to produce. It just took a while. So thank you for watching.